Robert, and this is episode 5 of the Nelson Pass F6 amplifier build. And I'm calling this episode, I Got Them Old Interference Fit Blues, Mama. Because this is about the 11th uh, iteration of trying to squeeze everything I want into the amplifier. And this is pretty much what I'm coming up with, how it'll probably look. But last time... I had done a few, I had slapped together a quick and dirty mock-up and I had a single board in upside down. The boards are now in right and if you look, the output devices are at the bottom where they should be so that they utilize more of the heat sink. If you put them up at the top, they're just probably only going to heat up the top of the heat sink. Well, it'll eventually warm up the whole thing, but it's more efficient for the output devices to uh, be at the bottom. When that happens, uh, you notice the capacitors, especially this one, are much lower than the other way around. And that causes an interference fit with the filter capacitors on the uh, power supply boards. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's also an interference fit with the uh, input transformers on both sides. So I had to figure out a way to get the capacitors out from under where the amplifier boards. What I've come up with, I've had a lot of help. Thank you for my subscribers who uh, made suggestions. I know John said, hey, uh, remember they make uh, riser panels made out of the same perforated stuff as the bottom plate, this stuff. And they make small versions that mount onto it for vertical risers, which is what got me thinking this way. And ideally, I would rather have the board mounted this way so that the, uh, these, this row of resistors, pardon me, the row of resistors has a clear access to the top. But if you notice, if you do that, then the top cover is more or less sitting right on it, which not too fond of. And I mean, I could put quarter inch spacers in here, but it might look a little bizarre. That's one idea though. So the other one is just since uh, I've got uh, essentially six watts of dissipation on the uh, one, one ohm resistors there, it probably won't hurt too bad. Oops, wrong way. Probably wouldn't hurt just have it sit like this way on on its side. Item propped up on the uh, my uh, there we go on the uh, solder wick there. So the idea is to have two vertical boards here. Uh, they won't be able to connect to the back which would make them a lot sturdier but I'm probably going to put like I don't know, six screws along the bottom, make sure they're good and uh, solid. And they'll flank these, so these will stay this way so that they do get a fair amount of cooling. This should work well because it exposes a lot of holes on the underside for ventilation too. But the one issue that really bugged me, and you probably are seeing this coming, is how the heck do you get in there to the bias pots? I mean, no matter, I mean, that's a pretty awkward angle. Pardon me, that's a pretty awkward angle. I don't know what I was having you look at there while I fumbled for the uh, tweaking tool. This is one of them. I have a whole little pack of them in this pack. And none of them are long enough to reach that easily and the uh, pots are too close together to try and squeeze the uh, power board in the middle. I mean this will do fine but this one 
even after I took the extreme measure of drilling a hole in the middle, you see that doesn't reach. But this uh, will work if I have a corresponding hole on the uh, riser board. It's basically, uh, pardon me, hopefully you can see, but uh, this land is ground, this land is ground. So drilling a hole through them, through the gap between them, wasn't a major thing. So what I ended up doing was just whittling a uh, makeshift adjustment tool that's just long enough and it'll go in there and there now it's in but will it I don't know if it's strong enough to actually turn it <laughs> it's tr just strong enough to break <laughs> that was epic Anyway, I'll, uh, obviously there will be further engineering on the chopstick tweaking tool. Try and get something a little more uh, robust, maybe. But that is more or less where I'm at right now. There is uh, a L angle bracket, which will be arriving within a week or so, which hopefully I can mount the transformer assembly on. Uh, but uh, Mr. Lemurs had a good suggestion of actually mounting a, a plate on this side, and that may be uh, a, a, la a good last resort, getting a plate machined to do that. And I said I had them. There's a uh, terminal block. I'd put them in the most obvious, safest place, which means, of course, I'd never look there again. But uh, I've been ordering parts for the back panel to uh, get things moving along. Unfortunately, the back panel parts kit uh, that DIY Audio normally offers isn't available at the moment. They're sold out on them. So I've been having to get the parts bit by bit, piece by piece. And uh, these are pretty easy because uh, I know they're the Neutrik uh, uh, RCA parts that are designed to fit in the uh, balanced mounting holes. So that's pretty easy. And these will probably work. I don't know how good the quality is on them. But Here's your classic combination uh, IEC socket, fuse, and power switch. These are rated, I think, 20 amp, 15 or 20. I mean, I thought I saw it say 10 amp at the top. 10 amp, they lied to me. So that's what I get for buying it on Amazon. So the one that was really bugging me are, was the uh, speaker connectors, the binding posts. Because I really liked the ones that were in the DIY audio kit. And I kept looking at the WBT parts, thinking, well, that's got to be it. Uh, WBT insulated mid-size, mid-line units, but uh, yeah, they'd fit in those holes, but my God, they're expensive. It's $40 for each binding post. I really wasn't planning on spending a whopping total of $160 on just binding posts. So fortunately, the ones, it looks like the ones that were used in the DIY audio kit are from Parts Express. They have the same kind of soldering uh, tab on them rather than a separate tab like this. It's actually part of the machined body of the binding post. And those are uh, selling quite reasonably for uh, uh, 20 some dollars a pair, which is uh, far more palatable. 
And so I've got those on order. They're coming in. Good old Parts Express. And I wish I had more to show you, but this is about it. Anyway, there should be some pictures accompanying this. But this is where I'm at right now. Just kind of juggling things around, seeing what will fit and how to get things working when it's all powered up. This is Robert. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to. And if you're building a project, good luck with it. Wish you all the best success. And we'll see you next time. Bye.